With the continued advancement of ransomware attacks, it seems like there is a new headline almost every day of a large company being hit with some sort of crypto locker type attack. And for every large company that falls victim, there are even more individual users who will also end up having their personal files encrypted and held ransom until the attackers are paid. Welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we will be going over a simple and free way to help protect your important personal files that are stored in Unrage from becoming victim to a ransomware attack. Even if you are using a different server platform for your file storage, this video still can be pretty helpful with just a few platform specific differences. There are several different types of ransomware campaigns that behave differently, but at a very high level, ransomware is an ever evolving form of malware designed to encrypt files on a device, rendering any files on the system that rely on them unusable. Malicious actors then demand ransom in exchange for decryption. Ransomware actors often target and threaten to sell or leak exfiltrated data or authentication information if the ransom is not paid. Please do keep in mind that while I will be covering a few simple things you can do to help protect the data on your Unraid server from ransomware, doing them does not guarantee someone still won't be able to access your server or its data. There are also other more advanced things you can do to help further protect your Unraid server, but I will not be going over those in this video. I do have another video going over several different steps you can take to protect your Unraid server that I recommend checking out after this video and I'll have a link for it in the description below. Also remember that following the steps in this video will not guarantee that the files on your server cannot be impacted by ransomware. These steps are meant to help reduce the risk. And as always, if you have important data you would be upset about losing, you should be doing regular off-site backups of your data that is validated regularly. I'm not aware of any ransomware that directly targets Unraid at this time, but what could happen is if you have your Unraid shares mounted to a computer that becomes infected with ransomware, then the ransomware can and most likely will encrypt the files stored within that share along with all the files on the computer itself. By default, when a new share is created, it will be created with the SMB export enabled, and its security set to public. This means that anyone connected to your network is able to discover the share and can access, as well as modify the files of that share. In a previous video, where I cover the steps you can take to secure Unraid, I go over how the different security levels operate. But even when a share security level is set to private with only specific users having read-write access, the files on the share can still be impacted by ransomware if the share is mounted with a read-write account when the computer is hit with ransomware. In order to reduce the chance of this happening, we will be taking a few steps in order to not have a share mounted with read-write access unless the access is actually needed to either add or modify files. Instead, we will have the share mounted with a read-only account by default that will always be available, and then a secondary share that will require login credentials every time you want to mount the share with read-write access. I do understand that this may break some people's workflow, so you'll have to decide if setting this up is the right choice for you and if the added security is worth the extra hassle of having it set up. I personally think it's well worth setting up as it helps lower the chances of losing all of your data. You could set up multiple shares within Unraid where your most important files are kept and are protected with this method of access while having a different share with reduced access security as well. Before we actually set this up, we are going to first create a user that is not the root account that should be used to access your share. This is important as you should really keep the account that is used to access your shares separate from the account that is used to access and make changes to your actual Unraid server. To do this, click on the Users tab at the top of the page of the Unraid GUI. On the new page, click on Add User. Here you will create the user account. You can give it a description and change its avatar. You'll also want to set a password here. This password should be different from your root account password and be at least 8 characters long, contain upper and lowercase characters, should have at least one number in it, and should have at least one special character in it as well. For this first account, I'm going to name it readwrite. Once all set with your password, click on add. With the first account created, I'm going to create a second account called readonly. Technically you don't need a readonly account if you're using the SMB security mode of secure, but because I'm going to be using private, I need to make a read-only account as well. If you set up a second account to be used in this process, make sure that its password is different from your read-write account and your Unraid admin account as well. With our users created, let's now go over to the share we want to help protect to make sure it has all the correct security settings, as well as assign permissions. If this is your first time changing permissions for a share, or if you just want to test things out, I really recommend setting up a test share to set this up to try out. While you will be able to back out the changes you made to your share, it's a good habit to not just directly make changes to something that holds lots of important data. This isn't required, just something I highly encourage. Taking a look at the share I just created, by default, SMB export is enabled with the security mode of public. For this video, I will be setting the security mode to private. If you'd like an in-depth look at how the different modes operate, along with some other ideas, and how to secure your Unraid server, make sure to check out my How to Secure Unraid video, which I'll have a link for in the description below. Clicking Apply will add a new section called SMB User Access. Here you will be able to apply rights to all local share users created on Unraid. The access applied here is only for this particular share and will not impact any other share in your Unraid server. For what we are trying to accomplish, you use the drop-down menu next to your read-only account 
to grant read-only access. We will also do the same for our read-write access account, but giving read-write access. Once the permissions are as desired, you can click on apply. Now that we have our users set up and the correct security settings applied to our share, we can go ahead and set up the access on our computer. I'm actually going to cover doing this on Windows 10 and Mac OS version 11. If you're running different versions of those, then the steps I take will most likely work still, but they may require some tweaking to get right. Let's first take a look at Windows 10. With Windows 10, we have two challenges we have to overcome. The first is the fact that we need to mount the same share twice. Normally in Windows, if you try to add a server share that is already added, you're going to get an error. The easiest way around this is to use the IP address for one iteration of the share and use a DNS name for the second. If you are already running DNS in your network, then you can simply add a unique DNS entry for your Unraid server if you do not already have one set up. If you do not have a DNS server set up on your network and this isn't the excuse you needed to set one up, then you can actually just modify your host file to include a DNS entry pointing to your Unraid server IP address. You want to make sure that whatever name you pick is not something you would need to go to in the future as every time the name is looked up by the computer, it will always use the assigned IP address. Also with using the host name option, you will need to replicate the same host name changes on every computer you want to mount the shares on in this way. With a DNS server, you only have to make the change on your server and it would be applied for any computer using it. A third option would be to assign a second IP address to your Unraid server and just use two unique addresses, but that would be no fun. For this video, I'm going to use a host name on my computer. With the unique name set up, we can now set up our shares. The first one will be for read-only access. This share will always be connected and available. For the location, you can either use the IP address or DNS name of the server if you want. This decision has no impact on how things will work. You'll also need to select Reconnect at Sign On and select Connect using different credentials. You'll then enter in your credentials for read-only access and finish the network drive mapping process. You'll need to make sure to save credentials here as well. Next will be to add our second map drive, but for read-write access. This time, you'll use the opposite for the server location for what you picked before. So if you use the DNS name first, you'll need to use the IP address. Whereas if you use the IP address first, you'll need to use the DNS name now. You'll also need to select Reconnect on Sign-In and connect using different credentials here. This time, we'll be using our read-write account, making sure to save credentials. As can be seen here, the read-only drive does not have the ability to create or modify files as expected, while the drive mounted with the read-write access is allowed to create and modify files. Now is a great time to rename the drives to something more meaningful to you so that you can remember which drive grants which level of access. With the way things are currently set up, the drive with read-write access will be mounted every time at startup. This means that we really aren't doing anything to protect our data from ransomware. So instead, we will want the drive to require some kind of manual intervention each time it is mounted with read-write access, which brings us to our second challenge. To get past this obstacle, we are going to go into the Windows Credentials Manager and change the saved password for a read-write access account to something that is wrong. To get to the Credential Manager, you can open the Start menu and type in Credential. Opening the program up gives us two options where we will select Windows Credentials. Next, navigate to the stored account for read-write access and select edit. Finally, change the password to something wrong and save it. Doing this will keep the drive configuration in Windows, but not allow for it to auto-connect. On login, the drive will show disconnected, and when you need to use it, you can simply click on it and a login prompt will be shown to enter in the correct credentials. For Mac OS, we will actually have two different options. I tested this method on both Mac OS version 11 and version 12, and I would expect this to work in other versions as well, with just the possibility of slight tweaks being needed. The first option is only mounting the share when you need it and selecting between read-only access and read-write access by entering the desired username when prompted. With the standard way of adding a network drive on Mac OS, the mount will go away on reboot, which will then require you to re-add it the next time you want to use the share, and allowing for the ability to switch to the other access level when needed. Just make sure to not check remember this password in my keychain, otherwise you'll need to clear the saved credentials before switching access. This option could be good for those that don't need the share mounted often. I personally don't use this way, but I wanted to mention it for those that might find it helpful. The second option, which I do use, is an enhancement of the first option, 
with the addition of automating the drive being mounted every time on startup. This will generate a login prompt for the share every time I log in, allowing me to select if I will be doing read-only work or if I need read-write access. To set up mounting the drive on every login, you'll first need to mount the drive just like you would in the first option, by going into your finder and pressing the command button and K key at the same time to open the connect to server window. You'll next need to type in the location of that share you want to connect to and then enter in your credentials. You can log in with whichever access level you need currently. Make sure that the remember credentials option is not checked, otherwise you'll have to go into your keychain to delete it for this to work. With the credentials entered, you can click on connect. In this state, you'll be able to access the files based on the account you use to log in and you can disconnect to swap credentials. To make the drive mounting persistent through reboots, we'll next click on the Apple logo at the top of the screen. On the tab that opens, select System Preferences and then go to Users and Groups. Next select Login Items and then click on the plus sign. From here, navigate to the share you want to have mounted every time, select it and then click on Add. You should then see the volume listed under the items set up to automatically open on login. Now every time you log into your Mac, you'll be prompted with a login prompt where you can enter your login credentials based on what access level you need. Just remember that you do not want to save the credentials, otherwise they will automatically be used on every reboot. Also take note that with both options on Mac OS, you can disconnect the drive and reattach it with different credentials without needing to reboot. Doing so will not impact persistent drive mounting on reboot. If you have a different way of protecting files in Unraid from ransomware or have other ideas on protecting Unraid in general, make sure to comment below so that others can see your suggestions. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows it should show it to others. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know when I release other videos just like this one. If you know anyone who might benefit from protecting their Unraid data from ransomware, don't forget to share this video with them as well. Thank you for watching.